Welcome to a special edition of It's a Hell of a TV Show. And tonight we have a special treat for you, and I hope you're tuned in right now because if I tell you it's a special treat, then I mean it's a special treat. We have tonight, not only myself as a guest co-host, but we have another guest co-host who is actually the man behind all the disco concerts that you've seen lately. Last year at um, Lehman Center for the Performing Arts, if you came out to that one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This year, we're starting off with a disco explosion June 22nd at Hostos, Cent Hostos Community College. Boy, I better get it right, because I got to be there, and I got to know where to go. So anyway, Mr. Excitement is in the building, too. Um, Excitement Worldwide Concerts and Events, he's in the building. He's going to co-host with me. And we have a special guest. If I tell you she's a special guest, I mean a special guest. We got Tony Award winner, four-time Grammy nominee, the most uh, beautiful woman I ever sat next to. My wife's going to be mad, but I, you know what? It's, it's different than that. I got the lovely Miss Melba Moore is in the house tonight. Melba, how are you? Fantastic. Oh, my God. Look Thank at my you. afro wiggling. Got my afro going. He's all the way live. <laughs> I'm all the way wired right now. I'm ready for June 22nd. How you doing, Melba? I'm, I'm fantastic. Thank How, you. I mean, June 22nd, Disco Explosion. Disco back in the Bronx. That's How's marvelous. that feel? That's wonderful. It's where it ought to be. Right, right. Now, last year, we, we did this the first one. I'm saying we, Mike and myself. No, it was we. And, yeah, it was we. we. Okay. <laughs> he, every time I say him, he say, no, it's we. we. It's, a, it's a we, you know, you know, it's a team of people that put this together. There's a lot of people behind the scene besides uh, Mike and myself. Mm -hmm. um, but last year was the first time we kicked this off, and it was at uh, Lehman Center for the Performing Arts. And, um, man, I tell you, 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 you it was, it was a no-brainer to have you back for this one. Thank you. And That, um, that was amazing. I, I'm sure this one would be, too, the... Oh, oh uh, yes. Listen. Well, I mean, because all the people, this was Gene Kahn. Who else? Right. Gene Kahn, first choice. Yep, first Double choice. Exposure. And uh, first lady, Sal. So, Miss Cal Williams. There you Happy go. Happy birthday to Cal Williams. Oh, that's also. right. That's right. We, we, right. Yesterday was her birthday, right? Yep. Right. So, um, I, I mentioned on the air, and um, she's going to mm -hmm. be in the building. I can't wait to see her. I've never seen her live, you know, so it's going to be interesting. Now, You'll love her. I, I know I will. I know I will. I lo listen. You're a true pro. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. And a great, I guess it's important to me, but she's a good person. Oh, see? That's probably why she sounds so good. You know, what? Right. It's, you know what? It's I always interesting to have a personal relationship with the artist. Yeah. You know, when you get on the stage, you say, wow, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's so good to work together. It really is good. What, what yeah. was it like last year? Because a lot of you guys may have worked together, but the whole group of people that were on that stage last year, it had to be the first time that was put together. It was the first time. So really? for, for us, it was like, oh, 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 it's because we're fans, too. Right. Oh, my God. I, I told Everybody my goes to each other's dressing room and, and say hi and hug and everything. Six, we stand in the wings five. and watch each other and oh. everything because we're fans. You know? I was, I was we love the music, but we love the artists. Right, so right. we love each other. It's, 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 thank you, Mikey. My pleasure. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Right, what, what, what gave you the idea of bringing disco to the Bronx? Cut three. I was going to the shows. <laughs> I was going to the shows, and they wasn't coming to the Bronx. Right. And, um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Miss Michelle Licata. Right. Also, Mr. Bob Goodrich. Okay. And they've been pretty, you know, really, really on there with the, the disco concerts. Right. They just wasn't coming to the Bronx. Right. Okay. And, um, and I'm really good friends with Chubby Tavares. Okay. And the rest of the brothers of Tavares. And right. they would always invite me out. And um, myself and Sino, we would go to the concerts, and we're just sitting there, just our jaws on the floor, just feeling that vibrational pitch of the music, but the right. energy in there was like, it was a little bit different from an R&B concert where you're getting slow jams, right. you're getting straight up tempo. That's true. And we, I said, stand up, we stood up, we're looking to the back, and there's 5,000 people going nuts. Wow. And I was like, uh, we may have to kind of um, throw a hat you know, back in the ring, it, and, and see what we can do. Right. And Mike, so, you, you live in the Bronx, right? I live in the Bronx. So you really know what's coming there and what's not. Yes. Yeah. See. And, and the, the thing about Lehman, which was cool, like they've had artists like Frankie Valley, um, no, no, Taylor no, Bell, um, Johnny <laughs> Mathis. Mm. When you're on that level right. at, at that place, that place has been around for 50 years. Wow. But they've never thrown disco concerts there. So. Groups like Tavares. See, right. they thought y'all wasn't going to last. <laughs> See, there you go. That, that's, that's what it was. See, that's they, what it was. You, that's what it they was. didn't think you were going to wind uh -huh. up being classics. One shot Absolutely. deal. There you go. A one yeah. trick pony. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And me and Murph was laughing backstage because after the first two acts performed, that crowd was running yes. in. Yes. We had like yes. five, six hundred last minute ticket sales. Yeah. And that's because they were black people, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot of yeah, right. last minute shoppers, you know. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> we got rhythm, but we can't got no time. <laughs> we got rhythm, but our time is completely off. 
<laughs> that BFT so, is for real, right? Black folk time, that's for real. <laughs> but it, it was a hell of a lineup, and, and we kind of, you know, handpicked right. everyone, but obviously we wanted to go with Melba first. Right. That was a no-brainer, and we just kind of went from there. But um, what, what I enjoy doing for myself, and just being a little bit different, have it be a little bit more female-dominated, right. you know, with the shows, because, you know, sometimes we forget the sisters. I don't forget the sisters, right. but... I think promoters do, and it's usually heavily male-oriented, you know, four-man groups, and that's cool. Right. But um, I, I want to make it, you know, make a change, make a difference, make a change. You know? I, I didn't know why it seemed a little different. And then, of course, I guess people don't really know me as a as a disco artist, and so right, that made right, the the mix right. a little refreshing, a little different. Right. And and really to understand that you have a genre there, it's lasted long enough for these people to become classic artists. Absolutely. You, you know what's interesting that you say disco, and I mean to cut you off. Go ahead. But um, I think the last show in, uh, in Lima, and you didn't do Pick Me Up Our Dance, right? Oh, me? You? Yes. No, she didn't do it. See? Don't ask me nothing pertinent to ask him. So, um, <laughs> so Mike, um, hey, Mike, uh, no, this we, is uh, we, June we're, we're 22nd. Is that a request? I would love to hear that song. I don't need, I, anybody, it's not my show. I, okay. All right. Mike, hey, Mike, you and I have to talk backstage, okay? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll backstage. Just let me know we'll before the show. <laughs> we got to, don't let her know on the 22nd, right? We got to let you know before <laughs> let the 22nd. before that. <laughs> now, you know, you've been all around the world. Now, in, in, in doing uh, an event close to home, how does that feel? Me? Yes. <laughs> Mike is always home. <laughs> oh, amazing. Right. Because um, well, it's amazing for a couple of reasons for me. The main thing is for me, I'm kind of reclaiming everything. Right. And fortunately, because of people like Jamie Fadden and John mm -hmm. Whitehead who right. wrote Pick Me Up, I'll Dance, right. who, who wrote Standing Right Here, um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, um, some of the other songs that have just remained for me, right. even though I've had some breaks in my career, I mean, they broke down, not that I took a <laughs> break. <laughs> the music has remained right. so that I could come back and reclaim it. Right. So this is, this is quite amazing to me that, you know, I don't, I don't know that people really know that Gene McFadden and John Whitehead, who wrote Ain't No Stopping Us Now and songs for the OJs, wrote these songs for me. See, a lot so of this people, isn't, this yeah, is, and, and that's, that's what I like the And because, that's right. because you're bringing it back in front right. of us and people really love right. it, we'll get a chance to see, you know, the real quality that, right. that, that we have here. Right. It's just there. I mean, it's not like right. it's there because we're there, right. but it, it's, it's, it has stood the test, te, excuse me, the test, test of time. time. Exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. No, you know, I, I think you're ready to sing. That's why, you know, it's like you, you're getting into your sing mode. You got that June 22nd. That's why I'm stuttering. I'm, I'm, no, no. I, I should be stuttering. I'm sitting next to greatness and I'm sitting next to beauty. I'm like, I should be like, I'm, 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 you know, but I'm uh, trying to be pertinent, so I stutter. <laughs> Because, you know, we, we've been getting a lot of flyers, and a lot of people say, I didn't know Mel was disco. I said, well, right. you know, I said, she's really not. And you can't really put a stamp on a genre right. for yourself because you sang everything. You sang standards. Well, I did, but the art artists that we have here right. are genuine disco, disco artists, exactly. legends. That's true. Right. That's true. They have stood the test of time. They've right. done that one genre. I mean, they may be able to do other things. I don't know. I was required to if I was going to stay in the <laughs> industry. So, right. but, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's interesting you said it because the, the, the changing of the guard in terms of music, yeah. um, you know, when, when you had doo-wop and then you had, like, R&B was my thing. I was like, that era of R&B was incredible. And then you had, here comes disco. And what happens is, is that you have these R&B artists are going outside of their comfort zone and trying to do disco. Right. And it's like, it kind of threw them off. Well... They at least had to because Ethel Merman was doing disco. Mm. You might not know who she is for your Merman. time. A lot of people and she's, don't know who she is. And she's she, Broadway. I'm, but I'm, that's how I'm, successful it was and right. how it reached everybody. And let me give credit to uh, uh, Van McCoy oh, for yes. almost single-handedly ushering it in with the, the disco hustle. Right. But then after that, it just seemed to just take on a life of its own, and it went into everybody's categories, and so everybody wanted to be a part of it. Everybody yeah. want to hit records. Yeah, they still want to hit records. I remember going to the record stores right. and buying 12 inch singles. Right. They all said disco singles. Disco singles, right. Well, they, they technically mm -hmm. were. Absolutely. It was a genre right off the, be off the beginning. You, you know, it's interesting to talk about standing the test of time and, and all that you've done throughout your career. You know, it's interesting to even be in the studio and in and, and rehearsing and sitting there listening to your new album that's in stores now, right? And I'm like, wait a minute now. That, that, you, I have a new theme song now. Because I heard you doing your song, and I'm sitting up saying, Mike, I, I got to get that. I got to get that. It's catchy. I need that album. I need that. So now we got people in the studio who are back there saying, this is my new anthem. 
you know, talk about your new one, your new song. Well, let me talk about It's My Time Again. It was okay. written by Dennis Johnson. Okay. I'm not sure if his wife, Reagan, wrote it with him. But what they did on this uh, forever M-O-O-R-E album, wow. uh, the other songs are written essentially by um, George and Angela Pettis. Okay. They're incredible songwriters and producers. But they're distinctly different. Um, George and Angela's songs are really contemporary R&B. Okay. So they give me an opportunity to show my little pipes. 